Hi, my name is David Gatwood. You've probably never heard of me, but I've been composing traditional liturgical music for a number of years in the Catholic Church. What you're about to hear is my recently composed Requiem, a setting of music intended for use in a Mass for the Dead. I composed the majority of this music during the COVID-19 pandemic in 2021 and continuing into 2022. I recently discovered some software called Symphonic Choirs that lets your computer sing choral parts to you, and so I decided to put together a proper recording of my Requiem so that I could actually hear how it sounds with a choir, and so that others could hear it as well. This recording is the culmination of that effort. This Requiem is composed for SATB Choir, Piano or Harpsichord, and for the Kyrie organ, along with the optional use of flute, oboe, clarinet, violin, brass quintet, handbells, and timpani. Not all instruments play in all movements. Although this recording is entirely in Latin except for the Greek Kyrie and one responsorial psalm in English, many of the movements also provide an English option. This Requiem also provides multiple musical options in certain places to accommodate both a traditional Latin Mass and an Ovus Ordo Mass in either English or Latin. I'll talk about these options more when we get to those movements. The first movement, the Requiem Overture, is an instrumental prelude that's intended to be used before the start of the worship celebration as a way of getting everyone quiet and setting the mood for this solemn occasion. I composed this movement last because it incorporates fragments of all of the other movements into a new work that weaves together the musical thoughts into a coherent whole. If you're interested in understanding this movement better, come back and listen to it again after you've listened to the other movements, and then pay careful attention to how the melodic lines are integrated, and in some cases even set to entirely different harmonization to create a musical work that prepares you for what's to come. The choir, organ, and harpsichord are tacit in this movement.
The Requiem Eternum Introit is the introit, or opening psalm, for the Requiem Mass, sung as the priest approaches and incenses the altar when entering the church. This is the longer of two movements that begin with the words Requiem Eternum. The second appears later, after the first reading, as one of the psalm options. The oboe, organ, and harpsichord are tacit in this movement. The Kyrie is a setting of the Greek text, Lord have mercy. Because the Gloria is not sung in a Mass for the dead, this Kyrie immediately precedes the Collect and First Reading. This movement opens with an extended melodic solo by the tenor that stands in stark contrast to the intensity of the rest of the movement. After that solo, the men of the choir sing a very simple repetitive Kyrie eleison, or Christe eleison, in unison, punctuated by an echoed Kyrie, or Christe, in four-part harmony by the women. Over the top of all of this, four soloists, one per part, sing Kyrie eleison three times, then Christe eleison three times, then Kyrie eleison three times, with the melody for each of these solos being in the soprano, alto, and bass respectively, which means every part has a solo in this particular movement. These three solos are in a style that mirrors the tenor solo at the beginning, but are against a much more intense backdrop that foreshadows the dies irae. This movement, because of its voice divisions, requires a somewhat larger choir than the other movements. The soprano and alto lines are divisi throughout, and the tenor line becomes divisi by the end and splits off from the bass part. In addition, a soloist is needed from each of the four parts to sing the choral melody, and you should ideally also have a cantor or a small scola to lead the congregation in their part. Fortunately, the congregation part is one that the congregation should already know. <clears throat> it was derived from the Gregorian chant of Mass 9, Orbis Factor. The final two notes of the initial Kyrie and Christe are altered, raised by one scale tone to fit the music. The chant music is also referenced repeatedly in the various instrument parts. This music was originally composed as part of a different mass setting, and for this reason it adds the organ on top of the, the ensemble used for the remainder of the Requiem, and omits the clarinet, oboe, and harpsichord. With a sufficiently large group, the oboist should consider doubling the flute part so that it doesn't get completely lost in the intensity of this setting. Yeah. 
Next we reach the first of several optional movements. Because this requiem is intended to be sung in either an English or Latin mass, there are two options for the responsorial psalm, the gradual psalm, Requiem Eternum, and the English-only lectionary psalm, Out of the Depths. This Requiem Eternum from the Responsorium Graduale is a close relative of the Requiem Eternum intro it, sharing much of the music, though this version is shorter and the ending is in a different key and it has different words in the verse. The oboe, organ, and harpsichord are tacit in this movement.
For the psalm, I also felt the need to provide an English language alternative. Fortunately, I've composed a fairly large number of psalm settings, so I looked at a list of psalms listed in the order of Christian funerals, and from those, I chose one that I thought would fit in well with the style without requiring any additional instruments. Thus, my Requiem also includes Out of the Depths, which is a setting of Psalm 130. Because I composed it several years ago, you can purchase this movement as a separate setting by itself, along with a number of other settings for this and other funeral-appropriate psalms from simply liturgical music. This is the only movement of the Requiem that is provided exclusively in English. The first three verses may be sung by either unison men's and women's chorus, or by solo cantors. This setting is accompanied by only the flute, oboe, and piano, with all other instruments tacit. Thank you. 
The next three movements are also a group of options. In a traditional Latin mass, the psalm would be followed by the tract. In an English mass, or possibly in a Novus Ordo Latin mass, the psalm would be followed by a second reading, followed by either an Alleluia or a Lenten Gospel acclamation, typically praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. The first of these three options, Absolve Domine, is a setting of the tract from the Requiem Mass. This movement will be sung immediately after the gradual in a, a traditional Latin Mass, extraordinary form, in place of the Alleluia. This may also ostensibly be sung in an Ovus Ordo ordinary form Mass after the psalm, but never in place of the Alleluia. The oboe, organ, and harpsichord are tacit in this movement. Next, we find a musical work that isn't often sung in the modern church. The Dies Irae sequence describes the Last Judgment, when Christ comes to judge the living and the dead. It was historically sung in place of the Gospel acclamation in a Mass for the Dead. Beginning in 1970, however, the Roman Missal removed this sequence from the Mass for the Dead, relegating Dies Irae to the Liturgy of the Hours. However, some traditionalists insist on its inclusion in their funerals anyway, and as far as I know, there isn't any actual prohibition on doing so. For this reason, I've placed it here, before the Linton Gospel Acclamation, or Alleluia, in conformance with where it would theoretically appear in modern post-1970 usage if it were actually part of the order of the Mass. If used in a more traditional Latin Mass, the Alleluia or Linton Gospel Acclamation would be omitted entirely. The woodwinds, violin, organ, and harpsichord are tacit in this movement.
The Lenten Gospel acclamation, Laus Tibi Christe, or Praise to You, Lord Jesus Christ, is a setting of the text typically used as a congregational response between the second reading and the Gospel reading in an ordinary form Mass during the season of Lent. Many churches also use this text instead of the Alleluia in a Mass for the Dead because of the solemn nature of this occasion. This recording uses the Latin text, Laus Tibi Christe. The woodwinds, violin, organ, and harpsichord are tacit in this movement. Alleluia is a setting of the text typically used as a congregational response between the second reading and gospel reading in an ordinary form Mass outside of the season of Lent. Other than the refrain text and how that text is integrated into the music, this movement is identical to the previous Laus Tibi Christe movement, so I won't be offended if you skip forward by about 2 minutes and 20 seconds. As with the previous movement, the woodwinds, violin, organ, and harpsichord are tacit in this movement.
Next is Domine Jesu Christe, a setting of the text traditionally used for the offertory in a requiem mass. Although the music of the, in of the initial refrain is shared with the Alleluia and Praise to You, Lord Jesus Christ settings, the remainder of the work is completely different. This use of a common melody for the refrain is intended to allow for congregational singing of that refrain if desired without the need to clumsily repeat the refrain or spend extra time teaching it to the congregation. As with the previous movement, the woodwinds, violin, organ, and harpsichord are tacit in this movement. After the offertory comes the Liturgy of the Eucharist. During the Eucharistic prayer, there are three responses, the Sanctus Memorial Acclamation and Amen, that are sung by the congregation. These three movements form the core of the Requiem Mass and are presented one after the next without interruption. The Amen also includes a musical setting of the very last part of the priest's Eucharistic prayer text, specifically the part that's in common across all of the Eucharistic prayers. In English, you might know this as through him and with him and in him. If sung in a non-liturgical setting, the priest's part should be sung by a tenor or baritone soloist. This setting is in a minor key and is deliberately slightly dissonant, yet each part ends fully consonant and in a major key via a Picardy third, serving as a musical representation of the inner struggle between the anguish of losing loved ones 
and the joy and hope that the deceased are in a better place. Because these movements are intended for congregational singing, the range of the melodic line is deliberately modest and the polyphony is deliberately limited. The organ is tacit in this group of three movements, and if possible, harpsichord should be used in place of the piano. Eucharistic prayer, the congregation sings the Our Father. Because different churches' needs are different, I decided to give two possible settings for this text. Either setting can be sung in Latin or in English. The first was composed specifically for this requiem. As with the previous movements, because it is intended for congregational singing, the range of the melodic line is deliberately modest and the polyphony is deliberately limited. The middle section of this movement is intended to be sung by the priest or by a tenor or baritone soloist in a concert setting. The timpani, organ, harpsichord, and all wind instruments are tacit this movement, leaving only the violin, piano, and handbells accompanying the chorus.
Because every Requiem should really have at least one a cappella movement, the second setting of The Our Father is intended to be sung either a cappella or accompanied by a once per half note chord from the handbells to help them keep pitch. The range of the melodic line is still deliberately modest, and the polyphony is still deliberately limited to allow for congregational singing. During the middle part, which is sung by a priest, or in a concert setting by a tenor or baritone soloist, the choir acts like instruments, creating an ooh texture underneath the solo passage, Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. All actual instruments other than the handbells are tacit in this movement. A piano may be substituted if handbells are unavailable. communion portion of the Liturgy of the Eucharist concludes with the Agnus Dei, or Lamb of God. This movement is a highly polyphonic setting of the liturgical text sung just before communion. The flute, oboe, trumpets, first trombone, timpani, organ, and harpsichord are all tacit in this movement, leaving only the clarinet, French horn, bass trombone, violin, piano, and handbells.
During communion, this requiem setting provides Lux Eterna, which is the traditional communion antiphon for a requiem mass. Although Lux Eterna uses the entire set of instruments, other than the organ and harpsichord, the orchestration is deliberately sparse, using the full ensemble only at both ends, and primarily using the woodwinds, violin, and piano to accompany the choir. This is important because the choir is likely to be receiving communion at the time, and may not be at full strength at any given moment. The organ and harpsichord are, of course, tacit. At only two minutes in length, Lux Eterna is not necessarily long enough to provide music during the entire communion procession, so this requiem also provides a second communion hymn. Exaudio Rationem Meam is the setting of a new Latin text that I authored as part of a UC Santa Cruz wind ensemble project during the COVID-19 campus shutdown of 2020 through 2021. The text is a prayer for God to save the petitioner from damnation. It is intended to be sung as additional music during communion as part of the requiem mass. Because his work was created as part of a separate recording project at the very beginning of the creation of this requiem, this recording features live instruments and voices. Well, voice anyway. Apologies in advance for my soprano singing. In this movement, the woodwinds, violin, timpani, handbells, organ, and harpsichord are tacit, leaving only the chorus, brass quintet, and piano. Oh, 
After communion, the choir sings Pie Jesu. This movement is a setting of the last stanza of the Dies Irae, which is a text that is frequently included as a separate work in Requiem settings. In this Requiem setting, because the Dies Irae sequence itself is included as a complete setting, this setting of Pie Jesu is intended to be used as a reflection after communion. The timpani, organ, and harpsichord are tacit in this movement. Communion, the final part of the Requiem Mass begins with Libera Me. This movement is a setting of the responsory for the absolution and is intended to be sung during the sprinkling and sensing of the casket before it is taken from the church. Although it is written as a responsory, it is not necessary for the congregation to sing. Because this is a particularly solemn moment, the orchestration is considerably thinner. The entire brass quintet is tacit except for the bass trombone. The clarinet, timpani, and handbells are also tacit. This movement may also be reprised graveside if additional music is needed, because its instrument requirements are similar to the Nunc Dimittis setting. Thank you. 
In Paradisum is the next to the last movement by Requiem setting, and the last movement to be sung inside the church. It is sung as a recessional while the casket is being taken to the cemetery for burial. As a change of pace, I set this piece using the original Gregorian chant as the melody, which starts in the soprano line and then moves into the tenor line about halfway through, accompanied by changing keys down a fifth to match a change in where the root feels like it should be in the chant. Timpani, organ, and harpsichord are tacit in this movement. setting concludes Graveside with Nunc Dimittis. This movement is a setting of the Song of Simeon, Now, Lord, let your servant go in peace. This may also be used as a second song during the offertory if more music is needed. Because it is intended to be sung outdoors, the orchestration is considerably thinner. It is set for SATB chorus with DVC bass line, oboe, violin, piano or keyboard, and handbells. The flute, clarinet, brass quintet, timpani, organ and harpsichord are tacit in this movement.
I hope you've enjoyed my Requiem setting. This setting is not yet published at the time of this recording, but I'll provide information in this video's description when the actual printed music becomes available. Thanks for watching and listening. I'm David Gatwood.